Hello, my name is Swiss Bianco. In this video I will talk about the Austrian Swiss Army knife. I nearly did say the traditional Austrian pocket knife, the Taschenfeitel as we see it here. I have four pieces of those different ones. Uh, they are relative old and it's hard to say if they are still made in Trattenbach village or little city or other places but uh, in this video I gonna show a bit how they look. Uh, in Switzerland of course we have the, the Swiss army knife style of pocket knives that is Switzerland famous for and like in, in uh, France they have the Opinel knife and the Lagiol and a couple other designs there because it's a it's a bigger country than Switzerland in Italy as well there mainly similar single blade folding knives and also of course the famous switch blades that they make the stiletto style the sleek sleek ones and uh, in Spain they have the Navajo in different forms and of course because the, the countries have the, the borders together and the uh, people they travel uh, sometimes the style comes a bit over the border as well but in this case we are gonna talk about the Austrian typical Austrian pocket knife the Taschenfeitel uh, Taschen means pocket Feitel means knife in the Austrian language as best as I see and as we look at typical samples here of those knives they were made in different sizes in different colors and also in a bit different styles of the handle as we see here all four have the different the, the same style of handle but in uh, Austria there are different handle so I was never there and could actually buy <coughs> such uh, knives of the flea market or or other places I got those from a friend that we did meet from time to time at exhibitions and he did bring me one of those and I gave him a Swiss army knife I uh, guess I lost out a bit on the on the volume of the of the tray but uh, that's okay that is a, a unique uh, possibility to study the Austrian knife so what we see is a rather thin blade the, the material is a stainless steel and on many also a carbon steel so it's a it's a thin metal that is stamped out we still see that it is relative rough rough on the on the corners here all the way as they stamped it out then we see here the rifle kind of rifle logo we see that on this one a little bit a bit better uh, the logo came in different styles as we see it on these two different stamps and then in front a bit of a nail nick uh, this one has a pretty good nail nick that one here that is yeah not much of a of a of a nick at all you hardly feel it as you go in so it's a simple a simple uh, thin steel and then on the edge sharpen it i did not use those knives or sharpen it i just got it how they are and put it in the collection then there is a wooden handle a different shapes a bit they come in different styles uh, that is quite likely the typical handle style that's why all four of them have this this uh, kind of style and we see the blade got a simple rivet 
all the way through with a metal that goes all around to give it more strength and then in the handle is a simple slot and we see they did first call it the handle and then they did the slot as we see the natural wood goes all the way behind here that part we see as they wood laid it down in a front we don't see that much yeah a little bit we see the where they put it in to lay it down and of course it's a folding knife it simple folds down like that uh, it's pretty stiff the wood maybe did swell a bit in north georgia here but uh, that's that's how it looks in your pocket the the edges are relative sharp so if you carry that in your pocket it may damage the pocket a bit maybe back then the material of the pockets of the pants pockets was a bit better than uh, today and not everything came from china or asia or you know cheap and cheaper and most cheap so that made it work out it's more for work pants i guess and uh, we see even as the blade is closed we see there the logo the rifle logo and the nail nick uh, because the blade stands out pretty good you actually don't need the nail nick too too much to open it up it is rather a stiff action there is no spring no nothing it's plain the wood that gives you a friction on the metal and there is no lock it's it has no spring no lock no nothing it's simply stay in this position open and uh, the metal of the blade pushes on the metal of the ring here that goes around the handle and uh, yeah that way that way then you you uh, cut uh, here we see also a bit uh, a problem maybe they they put the finger a bit more in front uh, what is also dangerous since the blade goes all the way behind if that ever would fold in it would uh, cut yourself but as I say I did never use it much at all I just look at it a bit the different versions and uh, yeah look look at it as a curioso I'm sure there are not many of such knives in USA who gonna gonna collect such Toshin vitals but uh, I like it it's something rather unique so that fits this one has a bit of a purple color on the handle uh, we see that one is quite likely a bit older one actually we see here is a bit of bevel of the blade where they did grind it with the line and the nail nick is also deeper uh, this one quite likely carbon steel we see a bit of the, the rust and then the last one the green one different green I did not rework it or do anything on it just look at it and put it in the collection yeah that much about the Austrian Taschenfeitel uh, rather curiosa of a, of a knife but a uh, if you sharpen it up it sure should work uh, maybe maybe uh, round off a bit uh, the edges and uh, sharpen the blade and then then uh, that knife should uh, work pretty well for the size and uh, the thin the rather thin blade they use